Uh, what I want to do first, it, it, this is the second in the series, so the first was more generalized in terms of veteran competencies that we're trying to expose you to. Um, we're going we're gonna to dig down fairly deep today. Uh, we're going to focus on traumatic brain injury and we're going to focus on post-traumatic stress. Um, so that's going to be the nature of what we do. But what I want to do real quick, and they'll give a little bit more about themselves when they actually start their part of this. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm Tim McFarland, and I'm one of the vet porn navigators over at Clark College. Um, I'm a 26-year veteran in the United States Air Force. I started out as an enlisted guy working on spy planes. And then during the course of my experience in the Air Force, I did 10 years of higher education. My last assignment was at the University of Portland. Um, Andy Jusa, she's a um, therapist over at the Vet Center social worker and she focuses on her work focuses on transitional issues and Mandy is a graduate of Norwich so to me I'm pretty impressed by that as a female that she made it through that crucible um, experience um, and she served in the United States Army as an officer and then uh, uh, Nikki Davis she's a veteran of the United States Air Force uh, security forces primarily what she did for eight years in the Air Force. Um, and she's a outreach coordinator um, for the Washington Department of Veterans Affairs. So, so just a little bit about what we're trying to do here. Because when I first introduced the idea of, of doing these workshops uh, to our faculty, I experienced a little bit of pushback because they're like, you expect me to be a counselor? And I'm like, no, we don't expect you to be a counselor. But in our case, and I know you guys have over here at WSU have the vet center, you know, that should be a focal, at the worst case scenario, focal point. If you've got a vet related issue, you have no idea where to go with it, you know, get on the phone with us um, and we can point you in the right direction for help. Um, so some, what are we looking for here? We're looking for people that know the basics about the issues and concerns faced by veterans and active duty, National Guard, or reserve students. And as I think today will play out, you'll, you'll see that these issues are not only issues that vets struggle with. Okay? So it does, this will help you with athletes and, and other folks. Um, we're looking for people that are <coughs> available and willing to assist these kinds of students. We, we don't expect to make you experts. And we'd like you to be, you know, problem solvers or on the in the trenches with the students. So, for the folks that are here from Clark, um, what we do is when you go through both of these workshops, what we're going to do is issue you a safe space decal that you can prominently put where you uh, reside, so vets visibly will know. Hey, I have an issue here. I'm having a meltdown here. I know that I can come to your office and you're going to be sympathetic uh, to what's going on in my world. So that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so then the last thing before I hand this over, in each of their presentations, it's going to be about 45 or 50 minutes. So after Mandy's presentation, we'll take a five minute break and then uh, we'll go into Nikki's presentation. Um, but these are the three objectives that we're trying to achieve here identify the role of uh, trauma based triggers, PTSD, and TBI. That may impede students functioning in the classroom. That's number one. Number two, understand how war zone experiences may influence a veteran student's productivity in a learning environment. And then the final, respond effectively to the needs of veteran students. So the other way that I look at this is, this is the what, this is the so what, and then this is the now what. Okay. So on that, Mandy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. Would you be willing to? I can do that. As we go, that would be awesome. Good afternoon. Hello, familiar faces. If I saw you last time, welcome back. Uh, I want to start out uh, just by saying that I'm going to try my best to speak up, but I uh, had a little bug floating around at home, so my voice is not what it normally is, although I believe I'm on demand. Uh, but I'll just kind of put that out there. Um, Are you going to start with the clip first? No, the clip will be in the middle of the okay, slides. Sorry. So we'll start with the slides first.
So first of all, I'd like to say that today this presentation uh, was originally created by my clinical supervisor, Lori Daniels. So if any of you are familiar with the Washington State Department of Health and licensure for social workers, <coughs> uh, my LICSWA means that I'm doing all of that uh, gathering of time and work to become licensed independently, and Lori is my supervisor who is watching me do that. And she did this presentation at Clark last year. October. October. So, uh, so she has graciously given me permission to use this uh, as her slide. And so the way that she looked at this was in the terms of context. So we'll start out with context. So first I'll give you my context. And then we'll talk a little about, about the vet center context, since that's where I work. And then we'll talk about vet context and then your context as being in the learning environment and how we can put all of that together in order to help the veterans. My context is that, as Tim said, I graduated from Norwich University. I don't, does anybody know of that? All right. <laughs> so Norwich University is a senior military academy. It's in Vermont, so it's military all day, all night, that kind of thing. So uh, it's a pretty cool place. But I graduated from there, commissioned, and then went active duty for five and a half years and was a transportation officer doing convoys uh, in Iraq from Kuwait to where Nikki was there at the same time we just learned today, which is kind of exciting, <laughs> uh, but to everywhere in, in Iraq, to Fallujah, to Mosul, all, all those places. And so we just did convoys uh, all of the time. So after serving for five and a half years, I got off active duty and came back and returned here. And I tried uh, a little civilian life and dabbled in it, I guess you would say. And I don't know that I dabbled well, but I, I did try it out. and. Uh, Maybe I should be more uh, honest. I kind of failed at it a little bit. And so I had to regroup and uh, ended up going back to get my master's degree in social work. I got a job at the VA, and I now work at the Portland Vet Center and where we do therapy for, for veterans. So that's a little bit of my context. So next slide. Before we go on a little bit more, I want to tell you more about the vet centers. So vet centers are part of the VA. We are all across the nation. We are funded federally by the VA, but we are not part of the VA Medical Center. So you have the, the VA here in Vancouver and Portland. Those are all part of the VA hospital. But vet centers were created in the 70s by Vietnam veterans coming back, saying we need a place within the community so we can talk about our wartime experience. So because of that, our eligibility criteria for the vet center is different than the hospital. Our eligibility criteria is primarily just combat veterans. We started out seeing only Vietnam, and then of course, as our country went into more conflicts, we of course expanded our eligibility, but we actually expanded to World War II veterans and Korean veterans first. So it was originally just for the Vietnam veterans. And then we have, have also incorporated veterans who suffer from military sexual trauma. So we do specific counseling for men and women who have experienced military sexual trauma. We also see those on active duty, and that includes our National Guardsmen as well, which is who we primarily see here in, in this area because we don't have an active duty base locally. And uh, also bereavement. So we provide therapy, grief and loss therapy for family members who lose someone on active duty and they could lose someone due to combat or, or an accident or whatever it is, but as long as they're uh, on active duty at the time of their death, we'll see mothers, fathers, spouses, children, brothers, sisters, any of that. Uh, and we also do family therapy for military-related issues. So we don't do traditional couples therapy, but if the family is struggling around some of the, what we call readjustment issues, we'll do some family work around. So here's some information if you want to jot it down to learn more about vet centers. But we have a call center that's specific just to the vet center. It's the 1877 War Vets, and that's now 24-7. I think they're in New York, but please don't quote me. I'm not really sure where they are, <laughs> but they're not here. I'll tell you that. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they're in New York. And uh, it is manned by combat veterans or their spouses. So everybody that they're going to talk to is going to have had a personal connection to the military, uh, unlike the, some of the other ones. Uh, there's our website there, and then here's our local number for the Portland Vet Center, which we, we have us in Portland, and the next one is up in Tacoma. So we're kind of in this little gap here. 
And then, of course, if you're interested more about PTSD, the VA has their national uh, center for PTSD, which is where they do a lot of their data. So if you're interested in looking at more, finding out about the research, that's all a really good place to start. And I want to start today with this video to help us get into the frame mind of context. This was created uh, by a student, Staff Sergeant Kyle Hoffman Stokes. And he was in the infantry, and so this was part of his readjustment when he returned home. And this is his visual representation of what it means to readjust into school. And so if some of you have seen this, I think you'll see that it's fitting. And if you haven't, I'm going to turn the lights off so you can see it better. Uh, but it's a pretty good visual representation.
seeing uh, all those other veterans gathering around him and, and providing him with the sense of community. And you know, Nikki and I were even, we were just talking about this today, and, and that being such a big part of what, what veterans miss. And I think that uh, what we're hoping to help by giving you all this information is that you can point the, the veterans on your campus to a place where they can have that community again that they're missing so much. So I think this is just a beautiful representation that Kyle has of, of his own PTSD and that work for him was part of his healing as well. So uh, it's, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it as powerful as it was.